I'm Tanya Nugent. Today on Pacific Pulse, we meet a man who's pioneered the modern use of bush tucker, Australian indigenous foods and flavours, presenting them in gourmet settings all over the world, from the US to Europe and Asia. In 2012, Andrew Filkey ventured north of the Torres Strait for the first time, presenting one of his unique menus for eager taste buds at the Australia Week celebrations in Papua New Guinea's capital, Port Moresby. Fantastic to be here in Port Moresby at the fantastic Airways Hotel. Wonderful place, working with a brilliant team here in PNG. And I'm really excited to be showcasing some of our amazing Australian ingredients. So let me take you on a little bit of a journey around Australia with your mouth, with your, sm and sm your smell from your nose. Here we've got some of the tropical species. My name's Andrew Filkey and I'm a specialist in Australian native cuisine as a chef. So I love to work with all these wonderful, unique Australian ingredients and bring them into a modern Australian style of cooking. But hey, let me first show you the yabby. Oh, they bite, watch out. Beautiful, fantastic eating. The yabby is like a freshwater crayfish from Australia. We've got lemon myrtle leaf, beautiful rainforest, tropical floral citrus. Kakadu plum, this is a fantastic, very healthy plum. It has the world's highest fruit source of vitamin C. It's really nice. Yum. Australia's really overlooked all these amazing ingredients that the Aboriginal people ate for thousands of years. We've been there just a couple of hundred years, white man, but we've really only sort of had a cursory look at these ingredients and not taken them seriously as proper foods. But now that's all changing. Wow, here we are, now we're out in the desert. Have a look at this, old man saltbush leaf. It's a really nice sort of grassy leaf, like a vegetable flavor, a little bit salty. Sea parsley, this one grows all along the Southern Oceans, right near the sea. Native currants, and it's a lovely rich tangy fruit flavor. Back to the deserts, beautiful little desert limes. This one has, Grapefruit lime, like a grapefruit flavour. It's been quite a journey learning about some of these ingredients. I've learnt uh, a lot by reading and also from talking to other people who've studied the Aboriginal foods, like scientists and uh, botanists and people like that. But also I've done some tours in a couple of the communities in South Australia with Aboriginal people, going on a camping tour with some of the elders, which was fantastic, and learning about all their traditional foods. Come and have a look. I'll get the lemon myrtle leaves. Just break them up, put it in. Well, as, as well as cooking, I, I mean, as a, a guest chef, I go all over the world educating people about Australian native cuisine, doing these wonderful dinners and meals. And, but as well now, as, as cooking demonstrations and, and master classes, even teaching chefs in some of the hospitality colleges. So tonight for the dinner, we're going to serve this lovely soup, Thai green chicken uh, curry soup with lemon myrtle and banya nuts. And we're going to serve it in a nice latte glass. And on the top, we put a chilled coconut lemon myrtle foam. It's fantastic. Working with Andrew is an exciting experience. We have all kinds of chefs who come in from various different backgrounds who come to do master class uh, almost every month here at Airways. I've been doing this from last year up until this year. It has been quite popular amongst the locals, especially here in Port Moresby. Working with Andrew is a, is a, is a wonderful experience, especially dealing with uh, authentic, uh, exotic, uh, wild bush tucker. And I hope uh, we all part when again learn from that and uh, hopefully put something into uh, our, our dishes as well. I've 
really enjoyed coming to Port Moresby and PNG and just looking, I was at the markets this morning, it was so exciting and to see fresh turtle meat and to see some of the, the clams and the mud crabs and the, and the beautiful vegetables and produce was incredible. I'd love to learn more. I think you've got such great potential here. We've got to find a young PNG chef to come on board and get really stuck in with indigenous cuisine and I think that the potential is amazing. Well, it does make you wonder about the potential for Pacific cuisine. And now to another feature from Australia Week, the work of Australian artist John Gould, who produced a collection of paintings over two years which capture his impressions of Port Moresby. Port Moresby, what a town, you know. Um, I always remember flying into Port Moresby for the first time. Um, we left Australia and three hours later we were coming alongside uh, the trunk of Papua New Guinea. I saw this extraordinary green, uh, absolutely Garden of Eden, laying there beneath me. Just a land, um, in a sense, that was just waiting to be explored. I remember driving from the airport to um, where we stayed our first night and um, just absolutely agogged at um, you know, Port Moresby, the town. Parts of it looked very run down, but gosh, they looked interesting. I wanted to go to some of those markets on the way from the airport. Uh, it was extraordinary, umbrellas. There was so much energy, so much colour, so much of something that I wanted to get hold of and put into those future paintings that were going to happen over the two-year period, two period that we um, have been living here in, in Port Moresby. I was um, very interested in that sort of Second World War history of the um, Kokoda track, um, the soldiers trudging up past McDonald's farm on their way up to, um, to, to have battle with um, um, the enemy at the time. And I, um, I could hear the gunfire and I could see just how incredibly difficult the landscape was to trudge through. So it was some of that historical perspective um, that I first started to work on um, gunfire over the Owen Stanley Range. This is a painting over here, um, Waiting to Birth, um, from my apartment uh, overlooking Ella Beach. I look straight out over the reef and I see the big ships coming and going. And sometimes they, they wait a little while in the outer harbour before they're called in to, to dock. And this is every single day, the coming and going of a port. And so I decided that what I'd love to do is I'd love to see um, this scene not from my perspective looking out to sea, but actually going out to sea, going out to the Coral Sea, and actually coming back into Port Moresby and seeing the ship and then the mountains behind. And then, you know, the sort of the clouds that seem to cling to the land. Um... When I see the boats, or rather the ships leaving port, they take a particular route. They find the channel, the deep water in order to, um, to leave Port Moresby. And I was rather fascinated by this because when you look at um, Port Moresby from, let's say, an aeroplane, you can see, in a way, how dangerous it is if you don't find the channel. Uh, and so that painting was born. Uh, in fact, one of the last paintings I produced in Port Moresby. I'd have to say that there is half of me that would like to stay on for a bit longer. Um, uh, I've had a terrific uh, two years here. I've enjoyed every single minute of it. Um, gosh, there's still a lot more to discover. So who knows, maybe I come back. And that's all for now. You can always keep up with us on Facebook and I'll see you next time on Pacific Pulse. <laughs>